Hi, it's Nick with the Run Testers, and in this video, we're going to be comparing the Nike AlphaFly Next Percent and the ASICS MetaSpeed Sky. Start by looking at the design, some of the key stats on the shoes. Uh, the ASICS Metaspeed Sky is the lighter shoe of the pair. It weighs 207 grams in my UK size 9, which is 7.3 ounces, whereas the Alphafly is 232 grams in my UK size 9, which is 8.18 ounces. The ASICS has a slightly lower stack as well. It's a 33 millimeter stack on the shoe and it has a five millimeter drop, whereas the Alphafly goes right up to that kind of 40 millimeter limit set by World Athletics. And it also has quite a low drop, low of four millimeters. Uh, both are obviously carbon plate running shoes. They've got uh, a full carbon plate running through the shoe and they've got kind of super foams kind of sandwiching that plate to provide kind of spring and bounce. In the case of the Asics, you're getting um, their FF Turbo Foam, which is a souped up version of the foam found in the Nova Blast training shoes. Uh, it's a nylon based foam. It has a fairly similar feel to the Piba based ZoomX foam you're getting in the Alpha Fly. Um, it's maybe not quite as soft, but yeah, it's got that kind of springiness to it that people are coming to expect from high stack racing shoes. Uh, the Alpha Fly obviously has ZoomX in it and a huge amount of it, as you can see, which is kind of, you know, the original super foam very light very soft very springy great stuff and the difference it has to other nike racing shoes like the vapefly is these air zoom pods in the forefoot these add a bit of a firmer feel to the kind of forefoot part of the shoe and, and add a little bit of kind of more pop to your toe off both have got quite lightweight uppers the asset is more of a mesh and it's got actually quite a considerable amount of cushioning around the heel here even if the tongue itself is fairly sparse on that front whereas um the alpha fly has the atom knit upper still kind of got the knitted uppers uh, on the nike shoes with a lot of brands are going over to mesh now um it's kind of a tight quite you know stiff weave you've got there so it does hold the foot quite well it can be a little bit harder to get into the shoe with its kind of booty design um, as opposed to having a tongue like on the asics but yeah both do a great job of holding the foot in place on the run even when running very fast um it comes to the outsoles uh on the Alphafly, you've got kind of Nike's traditional two strips of rubber, and then quite a large amount of um, rubber on the forefoot here of the Alphafly, which should increase kind of grip and durability. Uh, the Metacy Sky has a similar design on the back, but actually they don't extend quite as far, the rubber strips there. You can see I've ripped up a bit there as a heel striker. But they've got a really quite a generous covering on the forefoot of the shoe, and again, grips very well in all conditions. When it comes to the fit, I am true to size in both of these shoes. Um, Nike has a usual thing you have with the Vayfly and the Alphafly, which is narrows very considerably around the midfoot there. And some people with wider feet can find that they spill over a little bit um, and might feel a little bit unstable, but I don't have that problem. I have reasonably narrow feet. Um, I found them both very comfortable in the toe box. I've gone long distances in both and never any problems with kind of rubbing or a lack of kind of lockdown around the heel or the midfoot. So it's I'm a big fan of both of these shoes. Um, we'll start talking about the Metastreet Sky, one of my favorite new shoes of the year. I've done about 130K in the shoe now. I My first real run in it was setting a 10K PB. I've also done some really long, hard workouts, doing done kind of five sets of 3K in a shoe or three sets of 5K, things like that, like long marathon training workouts. And I found it really comfortable, it protects the legs really well, and it is lightning fast. It feels very light on the foot, it feels very nimble. Um, I do think that even though it is a high stack shoe, it does feel slightly more nimble than some of the others that do go right up to that 40 millimeter meter limit uh, grips well around corners really don't have anything bad to say about it i found it very fast um, and comfortable i think i will say about it is uh, as a heel striker um, i have noticed that i've ripped up a bit of the foam here you know in that distance so far it's nothing that's affecting performance at all might be something to keep an eye on if you are a heel striker and want to use it you know for kind of 500 600k you might start to worry that you're going to churn up that foam a bit too much i'll also say that i am not the typical runner for the metaspeed sky which is obviously meant to be this bounding runner they talk about asics in their kind of marketing i am a shuffly runner like i say i'm a heel striker um, and i found no problem Bit. like I say, first run out of the box I ran like a 32 30 10k pb and certainly felt that she was helping my performance in a similar way to other super shoes in terms of you know increasing efficiency giving you that extra kind of propulsion from the plate um, and also protecting your legs so you can finish strong in races the alpha fly for its part is a shoe that has become my go-to option for racing half marathon and marathon distance over the past 18 months I set my half marathon pb in this twice although I did recently beat it whilst running the vapor fly but that wasn't because I think the shoe's much better just slightly better course a bit fitter um, and my marathon PB, I ran 229 in the shoe earlier this year. And yeah, I think it's a super shoe for that kind of distance. Like it is still, it looks hefty. It looks kind of big and cumbersome and all that. But once you start running at pace, uh, it feels very natural to me. Um, 
think it feels fast and actually quite lightweight on the foot when you're running at pace it certainly kind of helps you tick along and even when going down to kind of i've done 5k race in the shoe and like track work and short reps and it i feel like it still produces the goods like it, it's, it's very fast despite the size and it really does kind of help protect the legs and keep you kind of firing you know throughout long races in particular i was worried when i went to the first marathon in the shoe that you know coming to the last few miles of it maybe it would start to feel a bit big on the foot you know when your form starts to go a bit you start flailing around a little bit it might start to get in the way be a bit cumbersome but no kind of the last kind of three four miles really like struggling through the end of the marathon that felt like it was helping you know ticking along and helping you know hit, hit those pbs so if it's more of a cruiser of a shoe i will say that but i feel like when you lock into a good pace in the shoe it can help you just maintain that for long stretches which is why i really rate it for half marathon and marathon distance i don't think it's a shoe that you want to go and go kicking in at the end of like a really hard fought 5k you want to sprint that last 500 meters i don't I don't think it's a specialty of this shoe you can still run a fast 5k in it but i think it suits runners like me who tend to get in my pace early and just try and hold it rather than runners who um maybe have a really big kick when they're feeling good at the end of races in that respect i think it does differ from the mess speed sky which i think is slightly nimbler and more versatile on those short races in that it is a bit more lightweight it is a bit kind of just smaller and you can turn up the you know turn on the gas at the end there if you are feeling good i'll fly run all day run race pace all day but yeah it's maybe not a shoe when you're tearing down the home straight trying to edge out another runner So I think both of these shoes have a lot going for them. And if you are looking for a carbon racing shoe, then both are worth considering. Uh, like I say, the Alphafly is my top marathon pick, and that's certainly where I think it excels. Um, whereas I do think the Metaspeed Sky is a slightly more versatile shoe, and it does have the edge of being a fair bit cheaper as well. You know, it's £225 compared to £260 for the Alphafly. So I'd say maybe if you're looking for one carbon racing shoe to do all your running in, all your kind of your racing in and some training in as well, you want one thing to cover across the distances, the Metaspeed Sky might just have the edge. I think it is a better kind of 5K shoe, 10K shoe. I would lean Alpha Fly when it comes to those longer distances, but it's still going to do a good job at those distances uh, whilst being, you know, less of a kind of monster than the Alpha Fly. However, if you are someone who is mainly gearing up for marathons throughout the year, that's kind of where I tend to be. Um, I probably would get the Alpha Fly. Like it's still going to be fine over 5k, 10k. It's not going to, you know, you're not going to run very slowly in those races because it's a big shoe. It's still very, very fast and bouncy and all that. But when it comes to the marathon, it really does shine. Uh, you just can settle into that pace and just tick along, hit your race goals, and it will protect you, provide some propulsion, and just feel fantastic underfoot. And once you're running in it, you really don't start to think about how big it is unless you look down and go, ah. You know, there is the big sticking point of the price. It's a very expensive shoe, um, and you know, if you want to save a little bit of money, I would get the Metaspeed Sky, although you can now start to find the Alphafly in various places and deals, although it's still not easy to do, obviously. I think I will say as well, um, as a hill striker, maybe it will hold up a little bit. You know, I have ripped up a little bit of patch on the Alphafly there, but that tends to happen in Nike shoes like that quite early and then stay like that. So I've got Vaporflies, I've done hundreds of K in, and that kind of is all I get, a little bit of peeling there. They don't really lose any performance, whereas I do think I'm going to rip up the Metaspeed Sky a bit more. Um, so if you're a hill striker, maybe there's a little edge there to consider in terms of durability. But but overall, great shoes, slightly more versatile, a bit cheaper, king of the marathon for me. That's maybe how you should look at it if you're trying to make a choice. But that's it, guys. That's our kind of quick comparison of the Asics Met Speed Sky and the Nike Alpha Fly. Let us know what you think of these shoes. What is your favorite carbon ratio at the moment? Please like, subscribe, ring the little bell, and we will see you next time.